Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's just such a pleasure to be here with you today. Well, we got a lot to cover today, so let's get started with our daily word. Our daily word for today is let go, let God. And it says, I do what is mine to do and release the rest. Over the years, I have accepted more and more responsibility as I have grown in maturity and experience. I have also grown in wisdom as I am able to discern what is mine to do. I have learned what to take on and what to leave for others. I have also learned not to exhaust myself by taking on too many commitments. Perhaps most important, I know when to use my will and determination to make things happen and when to let go. I recall times in my life when I felt frustrated that events did not unfold the way I had expected. I can now see how they unfolded perfectly, often in ways better than I could have imagined. I now let go easily, trusting in that perfection. And the scripture comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. In him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Let us take a moment and go into the silence and allow ourselves to come into a moment of peace and prosperity. And so it is. When you're down and trouble and you need some love and care and nothing. Come. 
If the sky above you grows dark and full of clouds, and that old north wind begins to blow, keep your head together. Good morning and welcome to our virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. Well, my lesson today is the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, part four. Friends, even people who don't know much about biblical scripture are most likely aware of the Beatitudes. But whether they are truly understood and appreciated is the question. And whether they are looked upon to have any real application to everyday life is another. Oliver Wendell Holmes once said, most people are willing to take the Sermon on the Mount as a flag to sail under, but few will use it as a rudder by which to steer. Today we are going to dig beneath the verse to find that rudder. So far in our study of the Beatitudes or Attitudes of Being, we've learned, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, means heavenly bliss and prosperity are invoked upon us when we set aside ego, pride, preconceived notions, arrogance, false judgments, prejudices, and biases, anything that prevents us from connecting with our source. The scripture, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted, invites us to allow our troubles to take us to a place where we can more deeply experience the presence of God. The profound statement, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, teaches us how to be manifestors in this world by being open-minded, having faith in God, and knowing that the will of God for us is always something joyous and interesting and vital and much better than anything we could think of for ourselves. Then there's, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, which means those who stick to the idea of right thinking 
shall have their lives transformed. Now let's look at the fifth beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Hmm. Emmett Fox said, as it stands, this bad beatitude calls for little comment because the words employed bear the ordinary meaning which we still give them in daily life. And the statement as given is as clear and obvious in its meaning as the law in question is as simple and flexible in its action. This beatitude is about the law of cause and effect. What we give out, we get back. As we sow, so shall we reap. What we are to the world, the world is to us. What goes around, comes around. We know this concept well, whether we've studied metaphysics or not. Regarding this beatitude, what matters most is that you be merciful, not just in your deeds, but more importantly, in your thoughts. This beatitude is emphasizing that the experiences that come to you are what your consciousness and thoughts have drawn to you. You may not like what you see in your world, but it is your attitude and reactions that have been drawing and that have been the drawing and inviting force. If you want to be loved, you must love. If you want friends, you must be friendly. If you want to be treated with respect, you must treat others with respect. Inevitably, it is on you to decide the kind of world you want to experience, the kind of friends you want to have, the goals you want to achieve, or whatever you des your desire truly is. And then begin to think the kind of thoughts that will draw them to you. But along with the thoughts, you must align your feelings with those thoughts. You must hold the feeling that goes with the thought because it works together. You can't expect to experience true love if you're not truly loving. You can't pin your hopes on being prosperous if you're not dialed in to practicing and being prosperous. You can't think you would like to have good friends but feel as though it won't happen. If our thoughts and actions are not aligned with the law of cause and effect, giving and receiving, you cannot hope to reap or manifest the good you desire. You cannot expect the law to work for you. Mercy is the loving disposition towards those who suffer distress. To have mercy is to be loving and kind to others. This doesn't mean just being loving and kind to your family and friends, but also to those who you might not know, and even those you don't like. We all like to consider ourselves to be merciful people, and yet there's a human tendency to judge ourselves and others. If someone else enjoys good uh, fortune, we tend to shudder in judgment that they don't deserve it, based on a fear that because they are enjoying their good, we might be denied ours. If something unfortunate happens to someone, we sometimes submit to a moment of relief that it did not happen to us instead. Judging is a sinister process, fit to wear the, a mask of self-righteousness. John Mark Green said, the self-righteous scream judgments against others to hide the noise of skeletons dancing in their own closets. Are you showing mercy in your thoughts as well as your actions, or are you judging yourself and others? Are you being kind to everyone you encounter, or are you being dictated by fear and distrust that kindness expresses weakness? True thoughts of mercy blesses us and others spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and materially. And how do we show mercy? Serve and cheerfully give from your heart. Feed the hungry. Give drink to the thirsty. Clothe the naked. Shelter the homeless. Comfort the imprisoned. Be just in the face of injustice. Visit the sick. Teach the uninformed. Counsel the doubtful. Comfort the sorrowful. Be patient. Forgive. Pray. Are you with me? Now let's look at the sixth beatitude. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The words used in this beatitude are used technically and cover a far greater meaning than we attribute to them in everyday life. To see God means to have spiritual perception, 
And spiritual perception means having power to, to comprehend the true nature of being, which most of us lack. In the dictionary of, of Bible themes, spiritual perception is defined as the ability to see beneath the outward form to the underlying, often hidden reality. Thus, if we are truly ready to be pure in heart, I mean, if we are truly willing to see and understand God or our source, not only will we see God in ourselves and everything around us, but also we will have the ability to understand that we can turn inward to God and overcome every situation. Every underlying challenge or difficulty or dark and low moment will come to the light and be loosed from our consciousness. This is because Anytime we act from a heart or consciousness of purity, we become instantly exposed to our higher power or higher self. From a pure heart, we open the door to blessings, gifts, and opportunities from heaven and release ourselves of the binds of earthly difficulties, materialism, and all suffering. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 9, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We live in a universe created by God, but we do not know it as it is. Heaven lies all about us. It is not a distant place far off in the skies, but all around us now. Yet because we are often lacking in spiritual perception, we are unable to recognize it. That is to say, we are unable to experience it, and therefore we leave ourselves separated from heaven and unable to experience heaven as it really is. Friends, to see God is to comprehend the truth as it really is. To understand this beatitude, we have to understand the word pure from the broader sense. Pure means a great deal more than physical purity. In its fullness, to be pure in, in heart is to recognize God as our only real source and the only real power in existence. The word heart in the Bible usually means that part of our mentality which modern psychology knows under the name subconscious mind. This is extremely important because it is not sufficient for us to accept the truth with the conscious mind only. Truth from a conscious point of view is only opinion. It is not until it is accepted by the heart and incorporated into the whole mentality that it can make any difference in one's character or life. The proverb says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. A small child <clears throat> with a bad cough was taken by his parents to a hospital emergency room. A nurse was examining the child's lungs with a stethoscope. And in order to keep the child calm, she told the child, don't worry, it's not going to hurt. I have to see if Barney is in there. The little boy looked at her with curiosity and said, I have Jesus in my heart. Barney is on my underwear. Friends, truth must be accepted in the conscious as well as the subconscious and absorbed into the whole mentality. Brain power is not enough. We need heart knowledge before we can see God. To be pure in heart like a child is to have spiritual perception or, or what call, Paul called the mind of Christ. To be pure in heart means to be free of all selfish intentions and self-seeking desires. To do God's will, not our own. To see God in ourselves. It means clearing our conscious and subconscious mind of all negativity, pessimism, disparity, victimhood, outer expectations and experiences so that we may create an inner environment of wholeness, truth, and love, so that we may overcome all lack and limited thinking, so that we can know who and what we truly are. It is to loose ourselves from our earthly attitude and way of thinking so that we can loose our heaven to infuse and surround us with greater love, goodness, opportunity, and prosperity. Therefore, we could rephrase this attitude of being as Emmett Fox has. <clears throat> Blessed are they who recognize God as the only real cause, and the only real presence, and the only real power, not merely in a theoretical or formal way, but practically and specifically and wholeheartedly, 
in all their thoughts and words and actions, and not merely in some parts of their lives, but in every nook and corner of their lives and mentalities, keeping nothing back from the divine, but bringing their own wills in, in every last particular into perfect harmony with the divine's will. For they shall overcome all limitation of time and space and matter and carnal mind and realize and enjoy the presence of God forever. Hmm. In the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verse 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Friends, a person with a pure heart thinks well about others. Their perspective of life is optimistic and they view it as a glass that is half full. One who is pure in heart believes in people and they believe that people can change and become better. They believe in second chances and they believe in new beginnings. A person who is pure in heart understands the law of cause and effect. They are merciful and receive mercy. They volunteer and serve and they often donate clothes or personal possessions and money to the source or sources that feed them spiritually. They don't seek or ask for anything in return or look for a way to impress other people. They do it only because they want to do it. People who are pure in heart are reliable and trustworthy. They would never betray a friend or someone who trusts them. They never brag about themselves or their possessions. They're always satisfied with their life. People with pure hearts are blessed indeed. Today, search your heart. Come into a new way of being, a way everlasting. If you do, I promise you that you will see God. Your wishes and dreams will come true. Mercy will be showered upon you. Your life and territories will expand and your cup will surely overflow. Come into a new expression today, my friends. Are you willing to do this with me today? Well, thank you all, and God bless you.
Lord, we come to that time in our service where we open our hearts to give. Allow yourself to give today so that your cup shall overflow. Now, there are three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at unitychicago.org and press the contribute button. Or you can text us at 773-492-8772. Or always send us a check to 2650 West Montro, Suite 110, Chicago, Illinois, 60618. And now I ask that you take that gift, take that offering, send energy from your heart into that gift as we say our offertory blessing together. Divine love, richly flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful for the blessings of this day. I am grateful for the blessings on the way. And so it is. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with us, you are moving energy, you are moving substance, you are a being of energy. Now open the way, open your heart, open your mind, claim your good today. And now let us take a moment to pray it into existence. Heavenly Mother, Father, everything God, thank you for these gifts we received today. We are open and receptive to doing your will, not my will, but thy will be done. God, take these gifts and use them to bring, bring, bring something into this world, make something better in this world. And then return that gift to the giver, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Return it 100-fold. Fill their bank accounts, fill their wallets. Remove any debt, any difficulty, any burden. Allow them to come forth in light and love and, and see their families moved into wholeness and well-being. Now, God, lead us, guide us. Direct us, always order our steps. Remove any ego thoughts. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. And we see it happening now in the name and very nature of Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. When I wake up in the morning, love, and the sunlight hurts my eyes, something without warning, love, weighs heavy on my mind. Then I look at you, and the world's all right with me. Just one look at you.
Well, thank you for being here with us today. If you're new, welcome. Welcome to our community. Welcome to our home. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. If you're going through something today, go to our website at unitychicago.org. Look around for a sermon or, or a meditation, something to help you, something to inspire you. And if you like what you see today, hit the like button. Ring the little bell. Allow yourself to share it with a friend. We want to send our messages out so that they can help others. Now stick around to the end so that you may see our announcements because there's always opportunities and possibilities for growth and change. And now I ask that you become still. And let us say our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Well, friends, thank you. Stay safe, stay warm. We love you. We'll see you soon.